Daily Bible Time, Tuesday morning. Good morning, Dominic Steele here. We're here in 2 Samuel 9 and looking at this passage where yesterday we saw David display generosity and grace to the grandson of Saul, to the son of Jonathan. And uh, we noted that David wasn't driven by bitterness or revenge, but uh, rather David was seeking out to be kind to the family of Saul. Um, and in the chapter, 2 Samuel 9, it climaxes with these words, and this is our passage today. So Mephishbosheth ate at David's table, just like one of the king's sons. Mephishbosheth had a young son whose name was Micah. All those living in Zeba's house were Mephishbosheth's servants. However, Mephishbosheth lived in Jerusalem because he always ate at the king's table. His feet had been injured. Now, the expression, eating at the king's table, that's the expression that happens three times in 2 Samuel 9. And I wanted to zero in on that for its extraordinary privilege for um, Mephishbosheth to eat at the king's table. And uh, I've come to the view that it's a very big deal to eat at the king's table. I first kind of noticed the expression in the Old Testament uh, reading through Daniel 1. And uh, in that setting, I mean, it's a long time after this, Daniel and his friends are in Babylon. Um, Israel has gone into exile. The, the king of Israel has been uh, defiant and disobedient of God. And God has judged Israel, put his nation into exile. And so you have some faithful guys, um, Daniel and his mates, living in Babylon. And uh, they're told to do these various things to compromise, to become like the Babylonians. And uh, rather than compromise, they ask for vegetables to eat. Please, can we eat vegetables rather than eating the Babylonian king's food, eating the food from the Babylonian king's table? Now, I was trying to figure out what that meant and why these young Israelites in Babylon were prepared to eat the vegetables that had been provided, but not the food and wine that had been provided from the table of the king of Babylon. And I was scratching my head about that. I came to the view that they were drawing a line. They didn't want to express their fellowship with the king of Babylon. They didn't want to express their dependence on the king of Babylon. And uh, they figured that eating at the king's table was an expression of both fellowship and dependence. And I think it is. I thought that further when I came to Daniel 11, verse 26, there's a line there and uh, there's, a, there's a fight. And um, it says, verse 25, with a large army, he'll stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south. And the king of the south will prepare for battle with an extremely large and powerful army. He will not succeed because plots will be made against him. Those who eat his provisions, who eat at his table, will destroy him. His army will be swept away and many will fall slain. Plots will be made from right inside, from the people that you would expect to be loyal to him, the people who are eating at his table, um, eating his provisions. And the narrative in Daniel seems to take it for granted that this is an extraordinary aberration, for you should anticipate those at your table to be both in deep fellowship and deep dependence uh, with their king. And then I'm reading again, I noticed at the end of two kings and uh, again, Israel under judgment and being disciplined by God. And uh, two kings, 25, 27, on the 27th day of the 12th month of the 37th year of the exile of Judah's king Jehoiakim. So the king of Judah is Jehoiakim. In the year that evil Merodach became king of Babylon, he pardoned King Jehoiakim of Judah, released him from prison. He spoke kindly to him, set him on a throne over the, uh, over the thrones of the kings who were with him in Babylon. So Jehoiakim changed his prison clothes and dined regularly in the presence of the king of Babylon for the rest of his life. As for his allowance, a regular allowance was given him by the king a portion each day for the rest of his life. So the king of Judah is given pocket money by the king of Babylon. The king of Judah is expected to eat at the king of Babylon's table. He is dependent on the king of Babylon. Babylon's king is generous to him, but there's a fellowship and a dependence. And there's clearly one recognizing the other as senior. Now, uh, that is what it is to eat at the table. Um, the fellowship there. There's a sense of fellowship, a sense of provision, a sense of generosity, but also a sense of allegiance, a sense of acknowledging dependence on and gratefulness to on the part of the recipient. Now that background 
helps us make sense of some of the expressions in the New Testament. Jesus says to his disciples, I appoint unto you a kingdom that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on the thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Um, this little background here in 2 Samuel 9 and those other passages in the Old Testament on what it is to eat at the table of the king gives a richness to that expression in Luke 22 that I hadn't noticed before. It's not just that they're having a meal, but it's an expression of the king extending grace to his guests. There's provision, there's generosity, but there's also an allegiance. There's Jesus saying to them, you're my guys. Or you get in John chapter 14, Jesus says, don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe in me in my father's house. There are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you, I'm going to prepare a place for you. If I go away and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and take you to myself so you may be where I am also. You know the way to where I'm going. And even in that, just thinking actually also that line, um, when people reject the invitation to the king's banquet, He's go out the alleys and byways and make them come in the people you'd not at all expect to see at the banquet of the king. That's, um, that's been some of my reflection on the king's table, the king's banquet in 2 Samuel chapter 9. Let me lead us in prayer. Thanks, Father, for this little glimpse of your generosity, your provision, your hospitality, but also that as we sit at the table, it's a great privilege, but it brings with it a responsibility and allegiance. And we thank you that um, you've been so generous to us and we willingly pledge that allegiance to you. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Daily Bible time today. See you tomorrow for chapter 10. God bless.